All right, how's everybody doing today? Uh, this is Trey Davis back with another episode on my Empower and Inspire YouTube channel. And today I have a special guest with me, uh, Norman D. Golden II. Uh, I'm ex super excited to share with you guys, um, you know, the story here and, it's, you know, some great, some great content. And uh, <clears throat> so, you know, I just want to, Norman, if you wouldn't mind just introducing yourself and just telling a little bit about where you're from. Um, What's up, y'all? My name is Normandy Golden II, as Trey Davis has already said. Um, I am originally, I was born in Wisconsin, Racine, Wisconsin, but I'm, I say I'm from L.A. because I was, you know, I grew up out there and um, that actually is the place where I started um, my career, my um, film career as a young child. Um, as some of you all may know, I played Devin Butler on um, the, in the film Cop and a Half. Uh, came out in 1993. Um, from then on, I continued my career. Um, I worked with Oprah Winfrey, Wesley Snipes, uh, Joan Plowright. Um, some of y'all may not know who she is, but she's she's a legend. Look <laughs> her up. Check it out. Um, X Men guy, Patrick Stewart. Um, yeah, and a few other people. Um, Maya Angelou. Can't forget the greats. Maya Angelou, Ruby D. Um, yeah, so that's pretty much my background in terms of, you know, my film career, um, where I come from. Absolutely. And so, you know, one of the things we talked about before was, you know, Cop and Half is kind of where everybody kind of knows you from. Um, yeah. But, you know, as we have discussed, there's, there's a lot more going on here. Um, and so I just wanted to kind of get into some of that today. Um, you could just... Uh, I know you're working on a, a few things, and you got a lot going on. You're a busy, busy entrepreneur, and um, just tell the people what you are working on right now, because um, um, I, I know there's a few things you got going on. Okay, give me one minute. We got a motorcycle. Yeah. <laughs> Can you still see me? Okay. Uh, you actually went back to the picture form. Oh. <laughs> okay. Shucks. All right. How about now? Got you. Yeah, you're back. All right. All right. Well. Um, I am in actual. I'm actually I'm in uh, post production on a, um, a film, a short film that I uh, did back in November, is entitled Misperception. Um, and basically, it's about a wayward teenager, um, a teen uh, boy that he's not a troublemaker, but you know he's kind of associating with the wrong crowds, and you know he's like the dude that's always trying to like do the right thing and help other people do the right thing, but he's always ending up in trouble. So. He ends up in trouble this particular time instead of jail time. Um, he's sentenced to a police aid ride along program. And in this program, this is where he really gets to see like how it is for both, you know, being of the community and also what the cops, you know, what these particular uh, detectives that he's riding along have to um, what they see on a, on a regular basis. And, and it. it it raises a few questions. It raises a few eyebrows, um, and it's an interesting piece because right now, I mean, even as of late, you know, there's, you know, there's still um, a lot of police shootings and killings, and you know, a lot of the a lot of the police killings that have occurred, the police um, officers were um, were acquitted. They weren't they weren't convicted. So that's like really it's it's a charged subject, especially for um, for the black community. But with this film, our goal is to show that it's not about you know i mean for years it's been you know we, we've talked about the race issue we've talked about you know police brutality we've talked about all of that but it's like you know as humans how do we actually treat each other we don't really do a good job at treating each other as brother or sister african americans we understand that because we've been on the receiving end of the brutality and all of that but so but at some point it, you know it, it, it that conversation goes more to like well you know once again, you got the songs, fuck the police, blah, blah, blah. But right. it's like, okay, no, let's let's really talk about humanity for a minute. You know, so this film is kind of it's this project is geared towards more like let's let's have a, a, a conversation as a whole. You know what I'm saying? About how we actually treat each other. That's what we should be talking about. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? I mean, don't get me wrong. Like, <clears throat> it's not it's not right for a cop to take someone's life right 
just because they think they can or it's justified or whatever the case. You know what I mean? However, there's a lot of misperceptions, misconceptions that are surrounded by um, that are, that are surrounding those circumstances. And I'm saying this because you know the the impetus of this particular project, its idea, stemmed from because my cousin, he's a, a officer uh, in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, and you know just talking with him. 10 minutes, 20 minutes, and you're like, damn, that's what you see <laughs> on a regular basis, you know, and he's like, yeah, this is, you know, our people doing some vows, you know what I'm saying, so, right. you know, and he's basically saying, like, what he has to go through as, as an officer, actually as an officer of color, mm-hmm. you know, so I, I feel like the story is, it's, you know, it's one of those that, it, it may ruffle some feathers, but, you know, great art does that, right? you know, and it, it's not just you know it's for cause it's for a reason absolutely okay so um you know earlier we talked about you know i'm gearing this i'm kind of like targeting entrepreneurs here um and so i have so now that i have norma here uh we talked about you know just what we were saying um taking your you know your work of uh, what you're creating and um actually implementing it into the world um, to help, you know, we were talking about how, you know, through the media, like around election time, a lot of people weren't aware of how their minds were being, you know, how they were being affected, you know, on a subconscious level by, you know, whatever the media was trying to pull, you know, turning people against each other. Yeah. Um, obviously, do you, you know, is it is it important for you to, I mean, obviously it is, but to actually take your vision and put it into your work like you are with this film um, and obviously do you encourage other entrepreneurs to do that i don't know if that makes sense but no it, it it makes perfect sense i feel that um you know it's as an artist writer whatever have you you know it's it's our duty to do that you know um media and entertainment is not i feel like a lot of people think that it's just oh yeah you know fun and games i watched this movie and it has these cool special effects and blah 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 you know but it's it's there's, you know, that saying, art imitates life. Right. Well, I feel like life imitates art. It's like a cyclical kind of a deal going on. Yeah. So um, there's, a, there's a great responsibility on content creators um, that I don't think the average person really, like, ho- holds that response, like, make them accountable or them, meaning content creators, the people that are creating these, these, um, these works of art. Right. Accountable for, you know, the images and the things that we are um, we are seeing. Um, so, yeah, basically to, to, to answer your question, I mean, I feel like it's it's very important. You know, art, art, it, it's it is very it, it plays a really big part in like our lives and, and you know, what we what we do. Absolutely. Uh, as individuals. Yeah. <clears throat> OK, so and and, um, you know, on that note. So to any entrepreneur watching this, I really wanted to get, you know, Norman's feedback um, because you're always creating, you're always working, you're always moving forward. As far as things like work, work ethic, you know, a lot of uh, entrepreneurs, they're interested in what other entrepreneurs rituals are. And we talked about this Uh briefly. So, you know, as far as having like a, a, you know, spiritual life or what keeps you, you know, you're a busy person, what keeps you grounded and um, focused and centered, you know, in this you know, crazy kind of world we live in. <laughs> yeah, this crazy kind of world we live in. Um, <laughs> one main thing for me is, you know, like you mentioned, the spiritual aspect. Um, really having a, a strong spiritual foundation, um, which will allow an individual to stay centered and also know where, like, where the buck stops for them. You know what I mean? Um that there's a saying, you know, if you don't, if you don't stand for something, you'll fall for anything. Right. So I feel like having a, a, a good spiritual foundation will allow you to know what you stand for, you know, Absolutely. and will keep you keep you in in, um, in check. But for me, that's a that's a very um, very important aspect. Um, I'm actually a Nichiren Buddhist, so I chant Nam Myoho Renge Kyo, and I recite portions of the Lotus Sutra, which the Lotus Sutra is a um, it's like the writings of um, of 
Shakyamuni Buddha and um, from way back in the day. <laughs> yeah. I don't want to get too much into it for the sake of the interview, but nah, hold on. <laughs> Motorcycle. <clears throat> yeah. Um, anyway, we recite two uh, two chapters from the Lotus Sutra, um, and that is called Gongyo, and we do that morning and evening along with chanting Nam Myoho Renge Kyo. Um, it's basically an audible meditation, and we do that to um, our we face our Gohonzon, which is basically an, ins- an inscription of various characters. It has Nam Myoho Renge Kyo inscribed down the center, but then it has you know, certain things that represent, um, that represent life as a, as a whole, um, certain Buddhist principles, like I said, for the sake of time, can't really elaborate on it too much, but right. that's my, that's my twice a day, you know, I make sure that I, I, um, I get that in. So basically it's, it's the equivalent of praying, you know, if you pray, or, you know, if you're a Christian or whatever you do, if you, you know, you pray, um, once or twice as other religions, they may do it a little bit more <laughs> right. than once or twice a day, but that's, basically my foundation um and it keeps me grounded it keeps me you know centered and and also not only grounded and centered but it gives me the um the energy and the you know the um it keeps the passion and all the levels where they need to be in order for me to you know operate at you know being an entrepreneur and doing my own thing you know you're your own boss you're your own like cheerleader in 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 most cases so that gives me that courage and that that foundation as well Wow, I really like. Uh, uh, aside from just, I want to add to. Yeah. Know, aside from staying in a, um, staying physically fit, you know. So I exercise five times a week. <laughs> right. You know, just to make sure that you know my mind, my body, everything is in order. Um, I'm a practicing martial artist. Have been been practicing um, uh, our niece, Eskrima Kali, for. Um, going about 15 years now yeah so um that keeps the physical physical um in place as well nice so you got yeah like you know we, we talked about <laughs> you know keeping integrated we talked about you know keeping it integrated and so entrepreneurs out there you know having your your spiritual discipline and your physical discipline you know if if you if you want to stay kind of centered in in this world, you know, <clears throat> with the demands of being an entrepreneur. Um, and I think, you know, last time I spoke with you, 